Welcome once again to The Breakfast on PLOS TV Africa. A few days ago, in an interview, President Muhammad Buhari made certain statements that have created conversations across the country. And of course, it is uh, the president's regular reminder that Nigerians should focus on agriculture and go back to the farms. There have, uh, of course, been uh, numerous arguments uh, for and against. Uh, there's also people who say that agriculture uh, is doing pretty well in Nigeria. An FAO report says that Nigeria's uh, agricultural sector contributed about 25% to its GDP. And uh, that basically should say that agriculture is really not the answer uh, to Nigeria's economic challenges. But this morning, we're going to be speaking with uh, Shegun Shopiton, who's an economist, and Kenneth Obiajulu, who is the CEO of AgroCore. Good morning to you both. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right. I'm going to start with Mr. Chopiton uh, and get your thoughts on this argument with regards to the, the um, use of well, what agriculture really offers and um, what it does for Nigeria's economy and Nigeria's GDP. Do you think it is doing enough and do you agree with President Muhammad Buhari that uh, we need to focus more on agriculture, people need to go back to the farms if we need to improve on, a, on our economy? Um. Okay, so um, thanks for having me once again, and Happy New Year to Nigerians. Thank you. Um, you know, to, to answer this question, I think we have to, first of all, ask what the objectives, you know, what, what were his objectives? What was he talking about when he was talking? You know, and if you remember, um, the question he was responding to was about the economic performance under his administration, you know, like, you yes. know, uh, the statistics were reeled out about inflation, about the GDP, you know, um, exchange rates and all of that. And then he responded with this, you know, and a lot of people have criticized even that response because to many people, he wasn't even answering the question. Um, but if you if you look at it um, with a broad mind, you realize that he was actually responding to the, to the question, but from his own worldview and from his own uh, mindset, you know. So I think to the president, the answer to everything is agriculture. Um, um, so he believes that once you're farming and people are producing, you know, then people can have what they can eat. I've, I've heard him say this several times. You know, people can have what they can eat, and then what's left over, you can then sell or export. Um, my problem is that this is a very, very simplistic um, approach to the question, and a very simplistic, with all apologies to him and his advisors, and a very simplistic um, um, approach to the overall economic performance question. So if you rate, if you look at how, how do we begin to, to assess, you know, his, his statement? For me, I think the, the easiest way would be to do a comparative analysis. So you look around the world and say to ourselves, for example, what's our objective? This same government has said they want to be top 20, um, part of the top 20 economies. I think they said by 20, I think the target has shifted to 2030 now, right? Now, if you take the economies in the top 20, um, ranking globally and look at the contribution of ag agriculture as a percentage of their GDP, you find that the most prosperous nations have uh, lower percentage contributions of agriculture to their GDP. So, so that begs the question, is agriculture the question uh, or is it the answer to the economic question? And I think that the answer is no. Now, am I saying that we don't need to go back to the lands? No, that's not what I'm saying. We do need agriculture because we have to eat. But I think the problem we have is um, the, the manner and approach that we are going about this whole agriculture question is wrong. What the government needs to focus on, if you want people to go back to the lands, then you have to provide the primary input that will ensure that our productivity is heightened significantly so that even as we're farming with our large uh, um, uh, proportion of arable land um, and our huge population, which are both advantages, um, when we farm, the productivity from that farming activity would increase um, the output and contribution to economic growth. You know? So right now, the way it is, I think that if we, if we go about it the way the president is, is looking at it, yes, people will go to the, to the farms, Yes, they'll produce what they'll eat, but unfortunately, it will not create wealth. And that's what we're looking at. We're looking at how to bring people out of poverty. If you are doing 
um, subsistence farming, right? You will not take people out of poverty. You will simply give them maybe, maybe enough to eat. All so right. this definitely cannot be the answer to the economic growth and economic performance question. Okay. okay, so I'd also like, you know, Kenneth or Bia Juku to also weigh in on the same, I mean, the same question. Do you agree with the president that uh, Nigerians need to get to farm and do you think that this is a solution to all of the economic challenges that we're faced with as a country? Um, <laughs> thank you so much and yes, Happy New Year to everyone. So I agree with the concept of, um, you know, focusing on agriculture as one of ways of, of um, you know, boosting the economic activities in the country, right? Um, but like, um, you know, um, my, um, the other speakers said, you know, that is an oversimplification of, of uh, the, um, the um, importance of agriculture and how we can you know, bring about that impact. You look at the contribution to GDP at 25%. Um, it's it's uh, relatively um, you know commendable, you know, given all the challenges that smallholder farmers would have to go through and they face currently, right? Um, it's commendable. You see issues around um, productivity being low, post harvest losses being high, um, access to finance. We're being we're beginning to see a little bit of boost to access to finance to smallholder farmers, commercial farmers, and what have you. And then, you know, access to market is also increasing. You see um, agriculture's contribution, you know, um, um, by export, you know, non-oil, um, you know, um, export numbers, you know, is also increasing. You know, but I think um, there is a need for um, us to also look at it from a food security point. How is agriculture being able to um, ensure that what we consume we produce um, a lot of it locally, right? You look at the expenditure on food, you know, or the expenditure of um, households. And in Nigeria, you see that um, in excess of 56% is spent on food alone, right? And um, spending on food alone, um, largely over 60% of those food items are imported into the country. And so you see the hemorrhage and the hemorrhage and the effect on the economy in itself. So I think where the um, the president um, was gearing towards, you know, or if I were to, um, you know, put, shed more light on, on on the comments, you know, and and you know, put it into proper context, it would be more around ensuring that what is consumed is also what is being produced locally, that can boost the economy, that can help in creating jobs, you know, um, over you know, 50, 60 percent of you know the workforce of the nation, you know, is in one way directly or indirectly you know, um, employed by the agricultural sector. So there is a need for us to be able to ensure that what is being um, consumed, especially when over 56% of that expenditure is on food, should be produced locally, right? It would have a ripple effect across all boards um, of the economic indicators. And right. that, in a way, would be able to boost um, the economy. Well, we, we've continued to make statements with regards diversifying our economy and, and the likes. You know, and there's people who argue that Nigerians are currently doing enough, you know, with regards agriculture. Um, Mr. Jupiter, I'm going to come to you in a bit, but um, Mr. Obiajulu, you are already an investor in agriculture. Um, but I want you to speak with regards, you know, the idea of a country that is serious about agriculture. Um, if you've been looking at the screen, there are different slides of um, um, very high-tech agricultural uh, engineering equipment, um, mechanized agriculture, uh, to be precise. Um, people have argued that the idea the president has is for everyone to buy a hoe and a cutlass and go back and, and you know, have cassava every couple of months. Um, but a country that is serious about agriculture, how do we get Nigeria to a stage where this what you see on screen now is a picture of Nigeria's agricultural sector. And is that where we so, are currently? Okay, so I'll start with the last question. Is that where we are currently? I'll say that um, Nigeria is tilting towards, um, you know, more of a mechanization, right? Um, but the challenges are 80% of the farmers engaged in agriculture are small holding, right? Um, those that cultivate on less than zero point or less than one hectare. Right. And then a, a, the next chunk are um, uh, middle class, you know, um, um, farmers. And then a very tiny percent of them happen to be um, large scale farmers. So we will not be able to get to um, the area where um, we are at that level of, of production. Right. Until we're able to bring the smallholder farmers towards um, commercial 
um, agriculture. And commercial agriculture's um, principle is more around you're cultivating for um, as a business and not just as a culture, right? You're cultivating to um, sell and what is left you consume. While subsistence farming is you cultivate to consume and what's left you sell. So the orientation has to change because commercially, we need to be able to ensure that we're increasing the productivity of farmers. How do we increase productivity of farmers? Ensuring that they have the right um, set of inputs, high yielding inputs, have the right variety seeds, have it at the right possible time, increase mechanization, right? Mechanization has the capacity to increase productivity drastically, right? Um, studies have shown that the use of tractors and um, for pre-planting, planting and post-planting um, activities can reduce man hours combined by over 80%. You know, and you look at the youth's engagement in agriculture, the orientation and perception of the youth towards agriculture is that of subsistence and um, very crude, um, in a very crude way that it requires the use of hoe and cutlasses. So the more you're able to drive the um, narrative around mechanization and how it can improve efficiency, how it can, how it can improve productivity, how it can reduce post-harvest losses, you look at value chains or commodities like tomatoes, rice, and post-harvest losses for tomatoes is in excess of 40%. You know, how are you able to reduce those post-harvest losses and ensure that that money tran it translates the money in the pockets of the farmers and in return would ensure that they're able to increase their productivity? So I think there's a long way to go. Um, we have started, um, we have started um, moving towards that, um, those engagements. Currently, um, lots of commercial farmers and processors like ourselves you know, are beginning to spearhead those activities and show people how it can be done and agriculture can be profitable. But beyond one, two, three, um, a few um, subsect of, of, of the players in the market, I think that um, you know, we need, agriculture has a perception problem, right? And this perception problem has to be tackled by um, individuals and professionals speaking to the nitty gritty of how the challenges can be addressed and how productivity can be increased, how post-harvest losses can be reduced, how markets can be connected to superior systems, you know, that guarantee that all year round farmers are happy and um, they're able to get, um, you know, decent living for what they've told all year round. For. All right, so let's also have Shigun Shopato come through here. Nigeria is, has been recorded as uh, the largest producer of yam globally and uh, second, third producer of sweet potato, among others, respectively. But being the largest producer, exports are still very low at 2%. And my concern is, is agriculture still the solution? And why do we have this? Um, yeah, I mean, agriculture is a part of the solution, right? Um, but I think, like um, my colleague has said, uh, one of the challenges is that we are simply not maximizing our output, right? So, for example, if you talk about mechanization, if you want agriculture to contribute significantly um, to either revenues or your GDP now, those are two different questions, by the way. You, you, uh, for, the, for the government, the question is contribution. You know, the most important question would have to be revenues. How much is agriculture contributing to revenues um, um, as, as against GDP? Uh, which speaks to the issue of diversification. Um, however, the problem we have is that we're simply not mechanized enough. And like uh, my colleague has said, you know, people uh, in the mind of the president, I think he, he, what he sees is people with cutlasses and holes. Meanwhile, what, we, what he should be seeing is people with tractors, right? Um, so you need to mechanize. Now, from a statistical point of view, Nigeria's um, tractors per 100 hectares of arable land is 9.8 9.8 tractors per 100 hectares of arable land now compare that to south africa in the same africa that has 44 yeah which is still terribly low by the way then compare that to other countries across the world i mean the highest um number of tractors per hectares per 100 hectares of arable land is from iceland they have got 15,000 15,000 tractors, you know, of course, this is, you know, is a function of how much arable land you have and how much tractors you have. So obviously, in an Iceland, for example, it simply means that the arable land, even though it's small, um, almost every single blade of grass there is done, is, 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 is cultivated, you know, with, with, with mechanized equipment. That's where we need to be heading. And the government needs to come up with a policy 
so that in that direction that would uh, you know elevate that number significantly so that the output can then increase now that is one issue the other issue i have is agriculture you know the question you ask this is agriculture the answer and i say it's a part of the answer but it is not the answer what we need you know so if you look at all of the economies across the world and just do a, a comparative analysis and a correlation you do a correlation between for example gdp per capita which measures the wealth of nations you know um and, and has speaks to the poverty question gdp per capita has an inverse cor correlation with agricultural contribution to gdp so the countries that have the highest wealth per citizen depend the least on agriculture in terms of contribution to their to their to, to, to their gdp so for example the united states is less than one percent of their gdp that comes from agriculture and then you also find that the same correlation you find that in countries where there is high poverty prevalence they have a high dependence on agriculture as a as a, as a contribution to their gdp so that that clearly tells us that we can't be looking at agriculture for the answers to the economic performance question and to the poverty alleviation question Agriculture can only be a part of the solution, but the president cannot be telling us, oh, we have a lot of arable land, Nigerians should go back to farming. No, no. We need to go and find a way to industrialize, one, industrialize agriculture itself, industrialize our productive base as a whole, and then move our economy to dependence on services. That's the answer to the economic question. So I think the president really, really needs to depend more on his economic team. I know he has a fantastic economic team you know the, the his current economic advisor that is just appointed is a mm, highly respected person uh, you know uh, dr doing salam is you know he's an amazing guy he's, he's ridiculously intelligent so the president needs to lean on people like that for advice on how to move our economy out of the doldrums you know he's still got a bit of time you know and i think that some impact can still be made in that direction well um now let's let's talk about and i'm going to stay with mr Chopiton here let's talk about you know a country that um, or president, rather, that is advising Nigerians to go back to agriculture or go back to the farms. Um, and also, you know, I want you to speak with regards uh, what role the government should be playing if they are serious about encouraging Nigerians to go back to farms. One of the um, uh, pictures that um, are on that slide, you know, is a John Deere, I think that's how it's pronounced, John Deere uh, yeah. tractor. Um, Average yeah. costs about $400,000, $450,000. Um, so that, of course, is, you know, with regards, that, that um, brings to your mind funding. But what role do you expect the Nigerian government to have played in the last few years if we were serious about actually boosting the contribution of agriculture and encouraging Nigerians to get back to, um, you know, to agriculture? So, so um, I think it was about, um, I can't remember precisely, about five years ago, the government came out with a statement that they had gone into a partnership with a Brazilian tractor manufacturer, we we're going to set up plants in Nigeria, you know, and then um, those those tractors would then be made available to farmers through some sort of um, 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 cooperative, working with the cooperatives and all of that. Um, unfortunately, as of today now, we still don't know what has come of that. And it seems to have gone the way of a lot of things that government talks about. Nothing has happened. Um, so that type of initiative is what we need to see. But we need to see a whole lot more of it, you know. So we need to see policies that encourages private sector investment into mechanization of agriculture. Um, we have, just like my colleague said, we have a lot of smallholder farmers, you know, and that problem is not going to go away very quickly because it's just the way we are, it's where we are for now. Um, we have a large population um, who are um, subsistence farmers. How can we help those large, uh, those subsistence farmers to move into economic farming? where they are producing not what they eat, they're producing and eating, and then they're selling significant chunks of what they're producing. It's by mechanization on the one hand. So government needs to find policies to make this equipment available in a manner that these people can afford. And I think the easiest way for that will be to have some sort of combined effort, economies of scale, uh, leveraging on um, cooperatives and other groups like that. That's one question, the question of mechanization. The other question is the question of transportation of produce, storage of produce. You know, so we have um, a ridiculously high percentages of wastage in, in, in our agricultural production because they get spoiled before they even get to the markets. You know, in some cases, you have a, 
So tomatoes, for example, you have as high as 80% wastage before you get to the market. You know, there is no way you can expect any serious economic contribution or output when you have those types of numbers. So government needs to find a way to improve on the transportation question. The rail, the ongoing rail um, infrastructure project is, is one, you know, but it's only a part of the answer. Then how will these farmers be able to get their products to uh, sold um, um, uh, get their products to, to market, you know, in good time, even without the question of transportation. And I think, again, the issue of commodities exchanges, um, 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 I remember, in, you know, in, in those days, you used to have cocoa boards that would take produce from, from farmers, um, pay them off, and then, you know, sell, on-sell those products. So government needs to look at the entire value chain of, um, of the agricultural sector and come in with policies that will encourage private investment. I'm, you know, I'm a believer in private sector um, participation in economic growth. So get private sector investment right. into you know, various value chain sectors. Um, Absolutely. To, to, to All right. So, so let's also bring in uh, Kenneth at this point. Uh, now, my concern is, as much as we're saying that it, it's very important that uh, we begin to look at earnings, GDP, and what have you for. Um, agriculture contributing. But do you think that um, we have the capacity to produce enough for, I mean, local consumption? Because I would rather think that a country that would want to make earnings out of, you know, agriculture should be able to produce enough for, you know, the locals to consume. Now, according to a report in 2019, uh, great on production of maize uh, at the time, we had the production capacity of 10,500 uh, tons and the consumption capacity at or the rate was at 10,700 so it therefore means that you know you have 200 above I mean where did we get that from the extra so my, my question is as it is right now this administration uh, do you think that we have the capacity enough to produce for local consumption have we been been producing enough for uh, home consumption so um, the issue or the conversations around um, supply and demand, you know, and um, capacity has has been out there for quite a while. Um, personally, I believe that Nigeria has the capacity to be able to produce what it consumes, right? Um, the issue is not about uh, the capacity, right? It's about the every other variable, like um, Mr. Um, Shagun has said, every other variable but that. You know, um, we have, if you look at the factors of production for most African countries and specifically Nigeria, you know, it is more than favorable, right? Presence of arable land, right? Presence of water resources, uh, presence of entrepreneurship, people, low capital, right? Um, you know, um, capital, yes, um, half and half. But in terms of capacity, I think we have it. It's about every other variable that supports the system, right? Um, there are several, you look at when there was um, a partial ban or a full ban of, on, on the importation of rice as far back as 2016, right? We saw that the um, the national import, the annual import bill for, for rice as, as far back as then was over 700,000 metric tons, right? And when there was a ban, there was a lot of pressure on the local market to see how it can meet up with the requirements of consumers, right? And we saw that the numbers kept going down, right? And the production kept going up. Issues around quality came up, issues around the price came up, you know, but in terms of the capacity, it was readily available. So I think one of the things that is very, very important and um, what the economic team of the president has to also look at is agriculture is- Recording in progress. Agriculture is not just about, um, what happens on the farm is an entire value chain. It's a continuation of activities. The closer you are to the farmers, the poorer you are you will be, or the poorer you will be, right? The farther away you are from the farmers, the more prosperous you will become. What I'm saying in essence is, while we focus so much effort on production activities, what is the essence of producing ginger, exporting ginger, and then importing ginger tea? What is the essence of producing cocoa, exporting cocoa, and then importing chocolates, right? What is the essence of producing a whole lot of activities but importing value-added products? At the end of the day, we are losing value every single time that we refuse to process or move farther away from the primary activity. So the issue is not about capacity. The issue is about how do we have, 
How do we add value to every single thing that we produce? How do we create a strong chain from production to marketing to transportation to warehousing? You look at government's contribution to ensuring infrastructural um, um, solutions are in place, like connection of the roads. You look at countries like Ghana. Ghana has been living off the activities of the Ghana Cocoa Board for God knows how long. So, so, but my question, but, but my question, which is, you know, the second part of that one. Yes, uh, you say we have the capacity, but are we have we been producing enough for, you know, home consumption? Of 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 course not. You know, just a few uh, months ago, last year, we saw that um, the the government, the CBN, had to give a waiver to I think four companies to import. 240,000 metric tons of maize, you know, to be able to meet with the requirement of um, the livestock industry because we couldn't we couldn't produce um, well enough, and you know that deficit was capable of paralyzing the entire economy because maize and um, soybean happens to be one of the major commodities required by almost everyone in the livestock industry. Components for feed, feed contributes, and you know the livestock sector in itself. Is a 1.4, 1.6 trillion naira, um, estimated at 1.4 to 1.6 trillion um, naira market, right? And in itself contributes to about six to eight percent of the GDP. You know, so that was a major issue where the government had to intervene because we weren't producing sufficiently enough to be able to meet with the growing demand of 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 the value-added products that comes out of it. Um, to answer your question, yes, um, we we are we still have a lot of um, activities to to put in place to ensure that we hit food sufficiency at at you know very close time. All right, um, Mr. Chopiton, uh, final question goes to you. Um, I want you to speak with regards um, where Nigeria. Oh, well, you know, like you said, you know, it, it tells uh, the mindset of President Muhammadu Buhari. Um, uh, with the, that's of course uh, his statements concerning agriculture. But I want you to speak with regards to um, what you think you know, Nigeria should be focused on if we're hoping to be among the top uh, 20 economies in the world by 2030, if there's any chance of that. Um, there's other directions that the country should maybe also be you know, focused on or try and, and invest in uh, that we still aren't. Um, so quickly also share that with us. Um, yeah, so, so I think it's... Um, <clears throat> It's, we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, you just look around you, you, the answers are there. Just look at the economies that you are benchmarking. What are they doing? And then we simply strive to do that. One of the advantages of being a late comer is that you don't have to make the mistakes of people that are ahead of you. So we don't need to go through the whole process again. Um, <clears throat> we need to encourage innovation. We need to encourage creativity. Right. So right now we know that the world is moving in the direction of technology, um, um, you know, social media spaces. Uh, amazing things are happening there. We have a, a vibrant um, tech industry in Nigeria. You know, we've got our Silicon Valley in Yaba, Yaba Khan, or as some people will say, you know, um, and across the country. So that's being just an example of so many other sectors that we need to focus attention on. The government needs to look at manufacturing because you know there is no way that, just like um, my colleague just said earlier, we must add value. And the only way to add value is through production. So um, all of those agricultural outputs that is coming out, very, very important for us to focus on agriculture, um, mechanize it, increase the output, um, become self-sufficient, and then take the, the, the that output and add value to it. In fact, by doing just that, if the government can just focus on ensuring that we can add value to our agricultural space, to that value chain, and mm -hmm. take it from the farmer and now move to finished products, our, our GDP will double in the period that the, the government is able to, and I'm just saying that off the cuff, it probably will be more, will we'll double in the period that the government is able to achieve that. And I think that that can be achieved, say, in a five-year period. These things are not so hard. They're not as difficult as we make them sound. You know, so with very, very carefully targeted policy um, instruments, regulations, you can move uh, private funding into productive sector, manufacturing sector, to ensure that our Greek space can then become um, input providers into the manufacturing space so that we don't need to import. 
So it, it, it's a double whammy. So all of a sudden, your dependence on foreign exchange um, to bring in things that we produce drops, which has a direct impact on the exchange rate, which then means that inflation can begin to drop. You, I mean, it's, look, these things are not really, really very, very difficult. And like I've said before, yeah. thank God that the president now does have a very, very competent economic advisor. I would just advise that the government listens to him. I think well, we'll do well. You know, I, I believe he's always had, you know, an economic team, you know, that had some level of competence in it. You know, it's really just about the level of interest because this is the same government that has not been able to address properly the insecurity challenges that have also affected agriculture. It's the same government that has still not been able to understand the value of ranching for cattle. Um, it's still talking about grazing roots for, for cattle across Nigeria. And so it basically just tells or paints a picture of what the mindset of the government uh, really is with regards to agriculture. Um, um, basically. But we're out of time for this discussion. Kenneth Obiagelu, CEO of AgriCorp, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Mr. Shegun Chopiton, also, thank you also for your time and for uh, this conversation we've just had. Looking forward to speaking with you both again. Thank you. Have a good Thank you. Thank you. Many Absolutely. thanks for coming through. All right, we'll move away from the discussion on agriculture and uh, we're going to Zamfara State to have an a conversation uh, with uh, persons with regards to the insecurity challenges, the death of about 200 persons, and what the Nigerian government is saying or not saying. We'll be back.